for joining us. So, um, well, I mean, what an appropriate way to start um, a, a session on virtual recruitment processes than the presenter having trouble logging in in the first place. Even though we did a test run yesterday, um, I experienced a new problem that I didn't experience yesterday um, and had to quickly fix that. So. Um, that's the world of, um, of virtual meetings. So thank you so much for your patience and for um, arriving. I think we're starting at least on time. Um, so my name's Sophie Zdenkowski. I also have with me today, um, Catherine. Kat, do you wanna just call out and say hi? Hello everyone. Um, so Kat is um, actually a UTS alum. So that's a bit, yes. a bit nice for her to reconnect with her university. Um, and, and she's a recent grad too. So um, if you have any questions for her around any of that, feel free to ask her those questions as well, um, as well as the topic that we're talking about today. Um, but I, I'm sure Arjun has already mentioned, please turn off your camera and um, your microphone for now. Um, should we have time at the end, we can um, always speak to you um, face to face on the screens. Um, but if you have any questions, please do chuck them in the chat function as we go, don't forget them. Um, but I will leave questions until the end so that we can zoom through the first half of this presentation and then have a chat um, towards the end. So to kick off, um, I wanted to start with a little bit of an overview. Um, so I uh, work with a lot of grad recruiters um, in the market and um, have been working with an association called the AAGE, which is the Australian Association of Graduate Employers. And they've been doing some surveys out there to see how COVID-19 has been affecting the graduate recruitment market. And the good news that I'd like to share with you today is that employers are absolutely still hiring grads. There's still a very, very strong demand for grads out in the market. And FDM is one of those companies that's included in that mix. Uh, we have not dropped our numbers. We are still recruiting. Um, the way that we work is we recruit all year round. Um, other companies recruit one year in advance. Um, but I think they put out a survey and about 2% of employers indicated that they were either reducing or cancelling their graduate recruitment for 2021. Um, and so that means there are still lots of jobs out in the market. Um, it just means that how we assess people has changed slightly because of remote working. So assessment processes and timelines may have shifted. Some are still on track. Um, regarding ours, we, we run virtual recruitment processes alongside face-to-face -face recruitment processes when we're in the office. And so we've just shifted all of our uh, recruitment processes online. Um, so our timelines haven't changed really. Whereas other employers you will see maybe a slight shift as they put their face-to-face -face, um, components of assessment online um, to, a, to an online platform of their choosing. The big thing that I need to stress today is that COVID-19 is a temporary crisis. Um, and so what's happening in the grad recruitment market is um, temporary fixes around assessment. But as far as big companies are concerned, graduates are a, their talent pipeline for their companies. And so they are not going to suddenly drop out um, that pipeline. They are still going to employ you. Um, it's about how you perform in those virtual recruitment processes. So I need to assure you there's still lots of jobs out there and we want you to get applying and perform your best. So what does virtual recruitment look like? Assessment centres and interviews will move to an online platform. I think that's fairly obvious. Um, from speaking to a lot of grad recruiters, Zoom seems to be the most popular of these online platforms because of the way that it allows us, the graduate recruiters, to, um, to moderate a group. Um, when it comes to one-on-one -on -one interactions, Skype, Teams, Zoom, they're all fairly similar platforms, but when it comes to group management, Zoom is by far um, the, uh, the option that has the, the uh, most control for the person organising the day. So I've heard from a lot of graduate employers, they, they're moving to Zoom, including FDM. We've recently moved to Zoom. Um, and so uh, it's, a, it's a good online platform for you to get um, comfortable in. So, so figure out where um, your microphone is, how to turn your camera on and off, where the chat function is. So today is a good practice, actually. Um, so have a look at the different functionalities, have a look at the view, uh, because this is actually a very, very popular tool for virtual assessment centres. It's not the only tool being used. Some um, companies are still going with Skype for Business, still going with Google Hangouts or Teams or their own systems that they've built. But Zoom is definitely a good, good platform for you to get used to. 
Um, sometimes employers will be handing out pre-work um, so that they can make the best use of online time. So in some instances, you, you would have been invited to assessment centres where you would have done a group activity and you would have had time to read the case study, put down your thoughts and then um, give a presentation or something like that. Um, in some instances, it's, it's hard to keep you online all day um, and so what they might do is give you give you something uh, some pre-work to do that you can do in your own time and then bring um, on the assess on the assessment time when you're doing the other presentation or the activity um, you come prepared that's another thing that might change the number of candidates in any assessment center is likely to be reduced and that's simply about managing the experience of the candidate um, and making sure that you have an option you have the opportunity to participate um, and that the coordinator has um, a, a better handle of the group so not making it too large um, larger numbers are better in face to face um, because you can actually see everybody um, and you can actually have multiple people from the company looking after those groups whereas on the online um, space it's usually up to that one coordinator. So the, the groups are going to be likely be smaller. Um, the tours around the company, um, a lot of companies love to give a tours to candidates to show their beautiful premises or give a sense of culture and their values. Um, and so they're likely to be shifted online. So you, uh, shifted onto video, sorry. So you may be watching a few videos to get it to, to, to understand the feel and, and, and the culture of the company. It's not going to be quite the same. Um, and, and, and the companies are aware of that, but they're trying their best to give you um, as good an experience as possible. The, the, the bottom line is that all through this recruitment process, um, candidate experience really matters to grad recruiters. Um, this is a two-way thing. So we need to um, show you what our company is all about and, and, and why we think it's a good opportunity. Um, and so we're going to try and make your experience as as best as possible considering the online um, limitations um, and vice versa you're going to have to bring your best game online so that we can assess you um, so it, it, it still it, the candidate experience still matters um, and we're still going to make the best of the of the virtual um, space so Employers are seeing some different things happening in the virtual space because there's already been virtual assessment centres being trialled. Um, we're seeing that there's a difficulty in you expressing yourself online. Um, so the important thing that you need to remember is we still need to see energy. That can feel really weird and I can tell you from personal experience that it took me a, a, a while to warm up to talking to a screen. It does feel weird. But if, but if you imagine that person on the other end and sometimes it helps seeing a person, so that's why I've got my camera switched on today, so at least you know that there's a person at the other end talking to you. Um, you need to imagine that there's someone on the other side of that screen that you're engaging with. So we still need to see your energy, whether and whatever comes naturally to you. You can see that I, I use my hands and so a little bit of gesticulation is fine. We want to see your eyes. We want to see you looking into the camera. We don't want to see you dropping off. So we need to still see your expression where possible. That helps with, with some lighting um, and with you knowing that you're talking to someone on the other side. Um, we're seeing technology go wrong. Hey, the technology goes wrong for me all the time and, and I'm on it all day, every day. Um, so it's more about how you respond to these difficulties. We're not um, assessing you on your Wi-Fi connection. We're, we, we might be assessing you on how you handle that when your Wi-Fi connection goes down. So have a think about that. Um, we're noticing that candidates are more reserved online um, and but as on a positive side that it's, they're willing to take turns and this is a positive thing um, however don't use this to hide yourself and and don't you don't hide behind um, the the equipment and the technology we still need you to we still need to see you we still need to get to know you I'll hand over to Kat now. So Kat's one of our grad recruiters. If you did apply to FDM, she actually might take you through um, the experience. And, um, and so she's actually seeing a lot of our candidates and, and, and hearing a lot of, about their experiences and what they're managing. So Kat, I'll leave this with you. Perfect, thank you Sophie for that. So yeah, as Sophie mentioned, I'm a graduate recruiter here at FDM. So I am you know, uh, directly in the whole process of recruitment from application all the way to placement in our program. So basically, um, as the screen shows, some of the three main concerns, the candidate concerns that we have realized and you know, have pinpointed as recruiters is um, you know, the whole notion about our employers still hiring graduates. Um, yeah, as Sophie did mention, the answer is yes. 
the talent pipeline is all you know through graduates such as yourselves um, and we do require we do um, you know uh, recruit on an all year round basis so we do have you know one to two assessment days each week and we do have around one to two um, start dates each month so depending on when you're graduating we do like slot you into the appropriate time you know to try and make it a really positive candidate experience and a seamless transition into you know a placement if you are successful so there is no need to worry we still are hiring um, and we actually are receiving a lot of applications at the moment during this uncertain time so yeah the second one is I'm managing extra stress and anxiety in what is an already stressful and anxiety provoking experience that is totally normal honestly even you know the internal staff here at FTM and in any company we're all experiencing the same thing so I think that you know that human touch and being able to you know understand each party we're understanding that you guys as candidates are very you know stressed and a bit you know uncertain in this time but then also we are as well so I think that mutual understanding definitely goes a long way so there's nothing to worry about you know if you're extra nervous you know um, not performing as well as you could in an interview, we are definitely taking that into consideration. Um, I think, you know, us as recruiters have been trained to look beyond that, you know, it is a very uncertain time. And we've, yeah, we've learned to realise, you know, people are uncertain in these times and it's, it's okay to feel a bit stressed. And the third one, what if my tech fails? So yeah, Sophie did touch on this before, but it is normal. I mean, last Thursday, I held a Zoom assessment center and one of our interviewers in our FDM team actually couldn't get on. So it's about, um, you know, managing it in the moment, not stressing out and no one's perfect. Things will happen on both ends. Um, we found an alternative solution. They still managed to have an interview via a different source. So at the end of the day, it is okay. It's just how we, you know, remain calm and try to counteract that. Yeah, so I think they're the main concerns that we're here to help you as well. And as Sophie said, I am a recent graduate of UTS. So I'm definitely, you know, a point of contact if you are having these concerns through the FDM process. Okay, um, perfect. So yeah, um, we, prior to COVID-19, we did have virtual assessment processes and in-person ones. Obviously now they're all virtual. So um, I'll just quickly, um, briefly take you guys through the process. So basically what happens is you guys would make an application via our website or, you know, seek LinkedIn, wherever we're, um, we're on those websites, even some of the uni, um, all of the uni pages actually, and UTS, they've got our FDM applications. Then we get them as recruiters, there's a few of us in the team, and we essentially pre-screen you. So it's a very informal chat, around five minutes, we just get to see if you're meeting our basic requirements, you know, geographic flexibility. It is a bit different um, during this time, but we've got a few basic requirements that um, you need to fulfill. If that all goes well, then we do invite you to a formal telephone interview. Um, so this is a bit more, you know, structured around six to seven questions that outline your experience, uh, both work related, uh, uni related, just to get to know you a bit more and about, you know, your technical, your passion for technology. If that all does go well, we do obviously invite you to the virtual assessment day. So we have shifted from Skype, we've shifted from um, Skype for Business, Microsoft to, to Zoom, which Sophie did touch on. I feel like Zoom is a very seamless, um, it's a seamless method. We can move people into their designated interview times, which just works really smooth on the day. So there's a welcome session at the start with um, either Sophie or one of our um, recruitment managers. And that, you know, um, ties in all the information about our values, what we do, um, you know, the goal of um, what we're trying to achieve for our consultants. And then we've got our three interviews. So you'd have three 15 minute interviews, ones with our technical um, trainer. So that's the technical side of, you know, the application then we've got a HR one and then we've also got a sales one from like a client perspective these are all strength based so no need to stress you can't really study for them but it is you know worth having um, examples up your sleeve to intertwine into your answers and then um, after that we do have a virtual FAQ session so our HR manager would you know deal with all the commonly asked questions and any queries that you do have at the end of the uh, virtual assessment day. Most of them do go for around from around 1230 to depending on how many applicants we have 
probably around 3.30 to 4 o'clock with all of those included. Um, if you do pass the interview banks, we do have a certain threshold, then you do get sent the online set notation and aptitude test and a coding test as well. And then if that all does go well, you do get a placement onto FDM's graduate um, program. So yeah, it is a pretty seamless and very fast process compared to other companies that I've seen. And we do try to, you know, keep in touch with you at all points of the process, just so you know, you know what's going on and you're updated about this whole uncertain time and your application in general. So yeah. And yeah, so I think the key tips that um, myself and the recruitment team have drawn out in terms of virtual recruitment and how to kind of stand out and do your best are these five key points. So the first one, test your technology. If you know that, you know, tomorrow you've got an interview online, I think it's definitely um, worth checking, you know, Zoom, making sure it works, checking the quality of your camera, checking, even just practicing on, you know, a camera as silly as it sounds, just, um, you know, position, positioning yourself in a, in a way where it looks professional, you can see your face, your mannerisms, you know, looking in the camera, as Sophie did mention before, keeping on top of your communications, this is definitely an important one. Obviously, everyone's going to have different confidence levels, different ways of speaking, but, you know, finding, you know, a way that suits you and makes you comfortable and helps you get your points across in the most effective way is definitely something that we believe you should practice beforehand so you're not frazzled on the day. Bringing your energy, this is a, a very important one as well. We want to see the enthusiasm. We want to see that you guys want the role. We also want to see that you're happy to be there and, you know, you're willing to compromise in such a uncertain time online it can be a bit difficult to show that you're you know energetic online but you know showing that you are passionate about the role definitely goes a long way considering your environment obviously you want to be in a quiet space a space with you know minimal noise you know playing kind of background dressed professionally um you know showing that it's like as if you were coming into our office you would want to show that you are being professional um, and you know taking it as seriously as it is but then also at the end of the day you want to be authentic and natural you want to show your personality you just want to show what you've got and you know maintain that connection with the interviewer on the other side I think those are the main points in order to become a virtual assessment star and also you know just making the whole process easy for yourself and also for the people that are interviewing you I think yeah they're definitely the main key points that I would um advise any graduates that are trying to um you know get a graduate job yeah thank you thank you so much kat so um so how are you going to be a virtual assessment star and do all of these things and be seamless um my key key overarching thing would be to practice so practice mm -hmm. practice practice don't let your interview don't let your um a virtual recruitment process with whatever company you have first be the first time that you speak to your screen. Don't let it be the first time that you test your Wi-Fi connection and test your test your computer's capability to log on to Zoom. Um, don't let it be the first time that you get some feedback on how you present when you're talking to a camera. Um, don't let it be the first time that you um, tell us a story about um, you know, a time you've worked in a team. So practice, practice, practice. This can feel really awkward, um, but do it with family members, friends, your careers um, team uh, are more than willing to give you advice on this. Um, find people um, where you can practice with it and get some feedback um, before you go to your assessment centre because it will show if this is your first time um, and and it will show you'll be more relaxed, you'll be more confident if um, if you've had a go at this before. So get to know your platforms um, and get to know what, it, what this feels like speaking to a screen. Moving on, if my computer will let me. Um, I wanted to encourage you to send your questions in if you have any um, at this point. I, I did want to start though with some common ones that I do um, receive um, and that is around what can go wrong and how can I avoid it from going wrong and the and rather than rattling off a massive list of what can go wrong I thought I might point out to you that there um, there are things that are within your control and there are things that are out of your control um, so the things that are in your control is, uh, is your appearance um, the things that are in your control um, are 
things like plugging in your laptop to make sure that it's got um, power and that you're not going to run out of power, making sure that your Wi-Fi connection has been tested, um, getting to know the platforms, things that are in your control is how, how much you've practiced beforehand, things that are out of your control. Um, so whether um, like last week when I was running a workshop and um, some building work started happening next door and so I had some noise that is completely out of my control. Um, I also have children or so you might have people that you live with um, who you can try to um, make, you know, give you some space. However, sometimes you can't, you can't control the people in your, in your environment and they may interrupt you. Um, and so the things that are in your control, the grad recruiters hope and expect that you would take control of those. And, um, and they're gonna hope that you put your best efforts into making this as smooth a process as possible. Things that are out of your control and if they go wrong, acknowledge them. Um, and then move forward. Um, so if there's noise, if there's difficulties with technical, um, with the technology, if there's, um, you know, something, something's happened that you couldn't have predicted, you're not going to be harshly judged about, about that. So, um, so basically think about what you can control. Um, and then if things go wrong on the day that it's out of your control, acknowledge it reach out to your grad recruiter and, and explain what, what's happening and how you're managing it. And that's actually how you manage it if you manage it um, by keeping in contact and, and um, giving your, still putting your best foot forward, uh, that's gonna serve you well. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, how should you prepare? Well, as I mentioned, you should practice. You should test your technology. Um, you should potentially have a notepad and pen next to you in case you need to quickly jot something down. Uh, you should have, um, there's no excuses around um, commuting or, or not being able to find the place. Um, you, you should be ready to go knowing what your environment is going to look like, knowing what you're going to wear, knowing um, that you've got this hour that you need to put aside. Um, so you need to um, make sure that you've got space in your schedule, making sure that you're fed and you're, you've gone to the bathroom because um, while the, the online time is short and limited, um, they will, recruiters will try to reduce the time that you're available on, online because uh, they don't want to keep you in front of a screen all day, but it means that you need to be on. So you need to have everything around it sort of organized. Um, and I also wanted to point out the advantages of um, virtual recruitment. So a big one is that wherever you practice, if it's in your living room, if it's in your dining room, that's where you actually deliver your interview. And so in fact, you don't have to worry about unfamiliar environments. You don't have to bit worry about getting lost on your way to the, to the building. Um, you can actually practice in your home environment, in, in the space that you're going to deliver your interview. Um, and you can take some comfort in that, I think. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, carrying bags or, um, you know, being being a bit nervous in a in a in a big big city office, um, you can be in the comfort of your of your home and and make sure that that's a comfortable space for you to um, deliver your answers in in, in interview. So I, I do think there's some advantages that you can that you can um, use for this assessment centre. Um, but I will have a look at the chat function now and see if any um, questions have come through. I can only see, Arjun, do you want to help out? What, yeah, what sure. Um, I've got two questions uh, on the chat uh, sent to me. One is, what advice would you give on uh, the background for a video interview? Uh, do, do I recommend putting on a, a virtual background or do I, or what's considered in the background? Generally, like what sort of background should uh, someone be having in a video call, for example? Look, ideally, I, I probably haven't got the best background, um, only in that I've got a lot of light coming in on this side of my face. Um, and, and I will put that down to um, some restrictions that I'm facing today. Um, but generally, I would advise wherever you ha can have decent light on your face. The reason being is that we want to see facial expressions. Um, we're, we're not looking for anything in particular, but we want to see if you're smiling um, and if you're engaged and if you're engaging with the interviewer, um, that's really, really important so there needs to be enough light on your face um, not a spotlight but enough light on your face that we can see 
um, what your how your face looks and whether you're engaged in the question. Um, the background is, is not so important. You want to take down anything that is going to pull focus from you. So if there's a really loud poster behind you, if there's something that moves um, behind you, um, if there's anything that's going to pull focus from you speaking, then that's not ideal. But otherwise, you're at home. It's, this is a situation you've been pushed into. Not everyone has a home office or, a, you know, a room with nothing there. We, all, we, we live in homes that are full of our things. Um, so no one's expecting you to have an office environment um, that you're interviewing from. Just maybe consider anything that's going to pull attention from you. So if I had a bird in the background that was tweeting and moving around, that wouldn't be ideal because the person on the other end of the screen would be constantly looking at that bird. Um, if I had a really big loud poster or um, a lot, lot going on in the background, that would pull focus from, from where you're looking now. So yeah, uh, keep it plain would be my advice. Um, I don't recommend virtual backgrounds, um, it, just in case you were thinking about that one, and, and unless you, you really have to, because it does distort uh, your face, it does distort um, your gestures. I might do this and my hand might fade away because it's it, the computer's confusing my hand with the background. So um, keep it simple. Keep it formal, keep it simple. When it comes to interviews virtual or in person, my advice is if you're not sure, keep it formal, keep it simple. Um, and because it's really easy to adjust from there. If you go um, super casual um, and you rock up in a t-shirt and you've got, and you're like, oh, well, whatever. And there's whatever going on in your background and it's distracting, this is me. Da, da, da. Um, it's really hard to pick it up and, and turn that into a formal um, interview. Whereas if you've turned up with appropriate attire and you've got, you've put in the best efforts to keep everything simple and it, it turns out that it doesn't really matter to the, to the interviewer and they're, they're more of a casual person, well, you can relax then. Um, so always go with formal, um, and then you can you can relax from there, depending on who you're interviewing with. Um, thank um, you, Sophie. Another question is, if I am in a video interview and it's through a Zoom meeting, should I be the one to end that call when the interview is over or should I wait for the panelist to, can, uh, to end that meeting for me? In general, once you get online, a grad recruiter is want, going to want to control where you go and 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 when you come and go so um my advice is log on arrive and then listen to instructions so most grad recruiters will be prepped um with a, a run sheet of how they want to organize it and they will specifically tell you turn your mic off or turn your turn your camera off or in some cases turn your camera on, we want to see your faces. When you arrive in this room, turn your microphone on. So you need, so that's why I think it might be handy to have a notepad and pen next to you. But if you're feeling nervous and they give you instructions, you go, okay, right, they said, turn my mic off. Okay, they said that they want to see my face. To, um, so you can quickly make a little note of that. That's not for you to read off, but that's just, if you get really nervous and you forgot what you needed to do, You've just noted it down and you can explain that to the recruiter. I'm just, I'm wanting to make sure that I have this correct and I'm just going to take some notes. Um, so they will give you very, very clear instructions. In fact, Kat ran our virtual assessment yeah. last, um, last week. Um, how did you give instructions, Kat? Yeah, so basically there's a feature on Zoom that the interviewers in FDM, they've got that feature where you can actually wave at the host. So I would be the host if I'm facilitating. So the interviewer waves at the host and that's an indication that we know that your interview is over. So wait a few seconds and then the interviewer will tell you, okay, the interview's done. You can turn your camera mic off and just wait to be placed back into the, you know, the welcome session. So using that, you know, that tool that makes it a bit more easier and you can transition from interview to interview a bit more seamlessly. So it's them giving the instruction, you turning it off and then getting placed back into the, the main kind of section. So it's just, yeah, nothing really to worry about. Um, the interviewer will give you the instruction and you just follow. So nothing on your end that you need to worry about. 
Yeah. And look, if you get confused, ask, ask the question. Um, remember that the candidate experience is really, really important to us. Um, so us, when I, I speak about FDM, but I speak more broadly. I speak broadly about graduate recruiters. Your experience is really important. And if you're confused or if you're unsure, um, ask. Ask the question, whether it's via the chat function or whether it's sort of um, separately messaging the grad recruiter who's coordinating the day. Um, try to listen to the instructions very carefully. Um, they may email you instructions beforehand. Try to read those instructions carefully um, and, and ask questions prior if you have the chance. Um, but on the day, if, if you're not sure, we're all getting used to this new environment and, and, and your experience is, is really important. So ask if you're not sure. Um, yeah, it, we're, the grad recruiters are here to help. We want to see you perform your best. Um, thank you, Sophie and Kat. I've got a couple more questions related to the audio. So should people be wearing headphones or speak directly to the laptop? And I notice uh, some people are asking like, um, is wearing headset like I am uh, an issue or would you rather prefer speaking directly to the laptop the same way as you do? Are? I don't think it's an issue. I think both are, um, what I'm doing, what you're doing, they're both um, are still hearing you the same. So, I mean, if you do have a lot of background noise, wearing headphones can actually help. If you do have a quiet, um, you know, quiet room such as mine and you, maybe your headphones, like my AirPods aren't, um, they don't actually connect to this laptop. So I've got no choice. So I'm just talking freely and that's fine as well, as long as we can hear you properly. Yeah, absolutely. I would say headphones on, headphones off is fine. If you experience, and this comes when you practice, if you experience when you practice that the other person on the other end says, oh, you've got a lot of background noise and it's picking up a lot that you're, you're probably used to your own background noise because that's where you live. So I'm very used to the fact that my birds cheep um, and I don't know whether you're picking up that, but, but my ears almost tune that out. Um, and so if you get some feedback like, oh, there's a lot of background noise and maybe you should um, reduce that, then you might want to try headphones. Vice versa, I know a lot of people who have headphones, um, like myself, and as soon as you plug them in, your voice gets crackly and, and it could actually reduce your quality. So try with headphones, try without, get some feedback on, on what sounds better for the other person on the other side um, and, and go with that. But no, we're not going to judge you harshly for wearing headphones or not wearing headphones. Thank you. And um, I have the last question is more of like a comment about someone going through a Zoom panel interview and uh, them noticing that the panel, one of the panelists was disinterested or distracted uh, through the feedback that they were getting and they felt like uh, it was a bit unsettling for them. And how do you uh, manage that? Plus they wanted to see their identification papers on the video itself, which they didn't have beside them at the time. Okay. Look, this, this speaks to um, interviews in person as well as online. Um, so you can be an I've been there, so I can speak from personal experience. You can go to a panel interview and one of the panelists can be just not very present, not very um, candidate friendly. Uh, they could have been roped in at the last minute. They've got other things on their mind that they'd really prefer to be at getting done. Um, often uh, panels are brought together by not just recruitment team, but also other parts of the business. And sometimes they could be turning up with other agendas in their mind and not be giving it their all. That's not the best candidate experience and it's not the ideal. Trust me, in recruitment, we don't want that to be your experience. However, it's life and you make the best of it. So whether it's online or whether it's in person, um, if you can see that one of the panel members isn't as engaged, um, my best advice is just not to take it personally and to continue to give your energy and whoever is giving you eye contact whoever is looking at you pour your energy and and maintain your energy to to that direction and um but try not to take it personally um just i'm sure you're aware um in university um there are lecturers and tutors out there who aren't trained teachers and they're not always the most engaging, but you still need to perform in their class. That's reality. There's going to be interview panel panels where the interviewers aren't necessarily great interviewers. 
you still need to get the job. So you're going to need to push past that. You're still going to need to deliver your energy um, and you're going to make, you're going to need to make the best of it. So try not to take it personally. They don't know who you are. That's what, that's the point of the interview. So it's, it's not a personal reflection that they're disengaged. It's probably something going on in their heads. They could have a different agenda going on. Um, and it's, um, it, it, it's possibly also in a virtual recruitment space, potentially they're, they're not used to presenting to a camera and they're having trouble engaging on the online platform. Um, interviewers aren't perfect either. Um, so sometimes they don't provide the best experience. You need to make the best of, best of the experience as you can. Um, thank you, Sophie. Um, I don't have any questions uh, with me at the moment, okay. uh, but everyone, if you have any questions, you can uh, raise a hand and we can bring you into the conversation if you like. In order to raise your hand, you can click on the participants option at the bottom and you'll see a blue icon with a raise hand. Anything out there? It doesn't seem like. No, that's fine. That's more than fine. I mean, we might have covered everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the important thing is that um, Kat and I are still um, available um, post this session. If you, if you do have any questions about FDM or about the recruitment process, um, feel free to um, connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, no, so our names are available and I'm, I'm very easily searchable um, with my last name. It's a long one, but I can, I can assure you that there's only one of me. Um, no, and so I'm, I'm happy to um, um, connect with any of you on LinkedIn if you have any questions about grad recruitment, virtual recruitment processes or FDM in particular. Um, and, and yeah, we can follow up after this workshop. Um, otherwise, feel free to um, send your feedback to your careers centre um, and, and keep them um, informed about the sort of stuff that you want to see in, in this space. Um, thank you, Sophie and Kat, for running this session for UTS students. We really appreciate you taking the time out. You're most welcome. Um, student, everyone, you are welcome to stay if you have any questions um, for Sophie or Kat. And we'll still be here for a couple more minutes. And otherwise, if you have anything else going on, you're welcome to leave as well. I have one question about FDM and yes. uh, someone's asking, do you only recruit IT graduates? No, we recruit from every degree discipline. Um, we just want to see um, an, the right attitude and the right aptitude. So the right attitude means that you're a go-getter, that you're keen for the opportunity. Um, so we need someone that recognises the opportunities that we offer for careers in technology um, and, a, and, a, and a keen, we want to see the energy um, and the aptitude. So we need to see that you are passionate about technology. That doesn't mean that you had to study an entire degree about it, but if you do come from a non-technical um, degree. It means that you've had a dabble, you've had an explore, um, and you've discovered that it's something that you um, enjoy and that you'd like to explore more. Part of our grad program involves a three to four month training um, component with our academy in Sydney. And, um, and so we will teach you the exact skills that you need to know, um, but we need to know that you're gonna survive and thrive in the training. We wanna set you up for success for success. So um, we would encourage you if you come from a non-technical background, but you're interested in a career in technology to explore what that means, to explore whether that's watching YouTube videos or whether that's, you know, being a self-starter and doing an online course. Um, sometimes universities run sort of side programs around um, additional skills. Um, so if you looked into that, we want to see that you've had a bit of an explore and that in fact, it's something that you're really interested in and have, and, um, have had a dabble and it's something that you enjoy or um, are passionate about. And so there's, there's all sorts of different ways. I interviewed someone in my first week with FDM who um, didn't come from a technical degree, but had watched nine hours of YouTube videos to learn Java. And, yeah. and I was just so impressed. Um, that's showing both attitude, a go-getter, a self-starter, a self-initiator, 
and um, also aptitude. They watched yeah. until they understood and then they applied it and, and, and could demonstrate that they used what they just learned. Amazing, amazing. That, yeah. that person is just as applicable for our technical stream as someone who's come from a technical background. So yeah. what we care about is a degree. We don't care what degree that is or what university that is. And then the attitude and aptitude are what we're gonna interview, interview you on. Yeah, and also in our recruitment process, if we're looking, you know, as a graduate recruiter, if we're looking through your resume and we see that, oh, they're not really from a technical background, we still um, pre-screen everyone anyway. So you do have that opportunity in that call to express your love for technology anyway. So it's not like, oh, I don't, you know, do computer science or engineering. I won't, you know, get, um, get a chance. You actually do in the pre-screen if you are really, you know, as Sophie said, if you do have that attitude and aptitude, it will be shown. So we give everyone an opportunity.